All right, hello YouTube. Um, the video I put out yesterday was a doozy. I hope the four people that watched two minutes of it were so shadow banned around here, which we take as a badge of honor. Uh, uh, complete badge of honor. But that video was something, and the point I wanted to get across is there's no genetically super superior race, and black people who whom typically are the only ones spouting that BS need to get off of it. It's an insecurity that they feel about themselves, that they come up with all these theories and all this craziness, and it's just not true. Uh, there's no one race that's superior over another. Um, I guess 200 years ago when slavery was running rampant, that white people were talking like black people today. Uh, well, we know they were because you've got a lot of writings that are talking about all oh, the white race is so superior. Uh, however, n no, no. It, the, the, the superiority comes in the people collectively as a group and race. And what are they doing and what are they not doing? Uh, blacks were enslaved not because white people invaded the continent. Uh, their own black brothers and sisters were selling them. Uh, and that all gets lost in the wash there. And that's why I brought the video up that I brought up yesterday about race. But <clears throat> on the on the young man's that was talking about this stuff, there were some healthy, good replies back uh, from some younger black people that happened to think that I was uh, correct. So, um, and we got to talk about these things. If you're white, blacks talk about race all the time. They talk about how bad white people are, how bad Latin people are. I talk about how bad Latin people are. I feel comfortable in that, but it's not really the people, it's the culture. And, uh, you know, living in South America, going through things that are just foreign to me and crazy. And so I've said some doozies. And I'll stick by the doozies I've said, but it's, it's not the DNA and the genetic makeup of the person. Uh, it's the culture of the people. Um, and with all the propaganda that the blacks in the U.S. and I suppose in Great Britain are getting, uh, they're just falling into it, just believing a whole bunch of nonsense and typically the the leaders of black communities are typically weak people that feel very inferior themselves so therefore they have to boost their own race and say they're the greatest they have the greatest dna makeup and push down other races and it's not going to end well uh, <clears throat> if that continues it's just not uh Nobody wants race wars, and uh, uh, but blacks aren't going to win race wars. Uh, that that'll never happen. So uh, the the black racist uh, are only able to conduct what other races are allowing them to, and it's just as simple as that. There's no other way of looking at that. So, uh, but <laughs> thank the good Lord, most black people aren't racist. They're good people. They, you know, look how white that skin is. See that? You could take an arm, an old fella, you hold an arm up like that, and it could be a lot darker than my skin, and uh, and be a black man. And I'm a white man, but our thought processes are going the same. See? Uh, reason why I harp on a lot of this is because this crap I'm seeing spill over in U.S. gyms. And warning to everybody, 
uh, in in U.S. gyms. You you think you're tough guys. The trainers think they're tough. Uh, you you uh, and you're not. And uh, not the racist ones. There's a lot of tough guys and a lot of tough gyms and a lot of tough trainers and coaches in the United States. And those guys who are very respectful and very good and very strong men and women, you know, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the weak ones that are allowing all this crap to go on inside their uh, gyms. And if we come around and we go in your gym, it, you, uh, couple, there's a couple of scenarios that can happen here. One is you own the gym. We come in, we tell you in front of everybody how full of crap you are, and then you take a uh, tell us to leave, and, and we leave because we're not going to sit around and get a trespass warrant to hang around trash. Simple process there, not complicated about it. Or we come into your gym and uh, you you buckle up and you don't you don't run us out under color of law. You buckle up, and then what's going to happen is you're going to have a lot of people get the crap beat out of them. That's what's going to happen. None of you are able to see what is real <laughs> anymore. I grew up in a real environment seeing real things not screens and games and things like that uh, our guys are uh, cut above the rest although they partake in screens and games and things like that uh, they're not like your guys uh, it's toughville up around here course you can't see it you've never seen anything like it in your life you know you just haven't so that would be what would happen and that's why I say a lot of what I say I'm trying to wake people the heck up all right so I'm going to give another little history exam uh, history uh, lesson here like I did yesterday on this race thing and blacks and athletics and I gave perfectly scientifically proven examples uh, and uh, truthful history that you can't say anymore. That's why we got five or six people that maybe they see this video. Um, so, uh, history. Let, let's go back to the early 1900s. Uh, and let's go to World War One. All right. Yay, the United States. Yay, Great Britain, who's got a great parliamentary uh, government. And France, who's got a great uh, bicameral uh, democracy. And, uh, and the United States, uh, democracy, democracy, democracy. All right, well, let's look at what happened. Let's look at what happened. And we got to get these kings. We got to get them. reason why they didn't go after the king of England uh, is uh, because they backed off, and that's a story for another day. They're back in the background, like a figurehead, per se. But that, that's a video for another day, and I'll end up making it. Uh, this is one thing a history degree can get you. Uh, it didn't get me too much more else, but it, get, it got me a little bit of historical knowledge, uh, most of which I learned after the, my university days and found out through real documentation that most of what I'd taught had been a bunch of bunk, and it was. It was, it was a load of malarkey. Uh, so World War One. what do we do? All right, so we get together. The Archduke Ferdinand is shot uh, of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. He was the uh, next in line uh, for the uh, throne in the 
Austrian Hungarian Empire. And boom, all these alliances go off. And we get in to World War One. Now I'm just going to hit the speed machine here. And we're going to go to the result. So we go over in. Uh, and, I, and I'm speaking from a United States perspective. We go over. Uh, blast the crap out of the enemies. Uh, beat them down. Boom, boom. Take their kings and queens out. You can't have this no more. Uh, then turn around and make the the losers, the ones that lost, pay for everything. And then what do we get a few short years later? We got Hitler, Mussolini, and Stalin. And then we got another war which was worse, which was worse. And folks, let me tell you something. Had the atomic bomb not been invented, uh, we'd probably be on our fifth or sixth world war by now. There would be one a decade. It'd be five years war, five years to build up again. Five years war, five years to build up again. Uh, they got creative and they they uh, do their warring in different ways now. So they found out they could make money in small places and have these de facto little wars and and make as near as much money without blowing the whole world apart. And uh, so we got that. And uh, so we go in again, you know, after we get Hitler, Mussolini, and Stalin, to go in again, devastate it all. And then what do we do? We give all of Eastern Europe to Joe Stalin. And then we have what's called a Cold War. And it was just space race. Uh, trillions and trillions of dollars and pounds spent on a war that hasn't happened. But by golly, you got to keep it in the forefront of the brain every day. Let me tell you younger people something about us older people. Up until, I believe, the seventh grade in my school, uh, you know how you got you you still got fire drills today, you know, and it, it, uh, you got even worse. You got uh, uh, gun welding maniac uh, drill days in your schools, got lockdowns. Uh, but back in my day, uh, we had nuclear war drills which consisted of us getting in a fetal position up under our desk and just waiting to get goned. To get goned. And uh, it's terrifying. The, the, the thought of it was terrifying. A lot of people... Uh, you would see a big backhoe go pull in somebody's backyard, a neighbor's backyard. You knew what they were doing. They weren't digging for a goldfish pond or a swimming pool back then. They were digging for a, 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 for a bunker. See, smart ones were anyway. There's a lot of houses being purchased today, older homes that have bunkers in the back. And I hope people that are purchasing these houses are keeping these bunkers, uh, you know, repaired and up to date because they may need them. They will need them eventually. So we did that. Uh, so, and then we've ended up getting to where we are today. R well, uh, I skipped over a big thing here. So World War 
two ends. Uh, now, mind you, in, in World, uh, before World War II started, Hitler told the Jewish population, get out of Germany. We don't want you here no more. Uh, f fact. Uh, all the banks, all the banks uh, in Germany were owned by Jewish people. So that created a lot of hate. Uh, near 50% of the German uh, family-owned farms were taken uh, by these banks who happened to be run by Jewish people. That's a fact. And uh, so a lot of hate was developing there. A lot of hate. And, and I'm not saying Hitler was right. Don't, don't, don't go there with me or misunderstand me. I believe in freedom. I believe in mutual respect. I believe in no matter your color or what you worship in or whatever your deal is, as long as you aren't hurting others, that we should be okay with one another and I should try to love you. That's my belief. Uh, however, let's talk about the good guys here in this. All these Jews start getting on ships. Uh, they, and they, they typically don't like to show this portion of it. Uh, they have put on the History Channel one ship that sailed out from Germany. and uh, But what they failed to, to mention is there were thousands, if not tens of thousands, of ships that departed Germany uh, for England, the United States, and Canada. And they were turned away. And said, we don't want you, we ain't taking you, and shut the door. Uh, to this day, there's a pretty substantial uh, uh, Jewish population in South America because a lot of them came into South America and were able to get in, legally or illegally, and continue their families and start families. And one thing great you, you should be saying about the Jewish population, uh, these people are strong. They are strong. Uh, they, you know, it's something about a child that can maybe witness a bullet going in their mother or father or both of their heads and go on and have a good productive life. My dad died when I just turned 11, and it wrecked me for quite quite a while. I was weak, weak, see. And everybody's weak today that I see, everybody. Uh, so give it to the Jewish people. They are very strong. They get beat down, they come back. So anyway, the good guys, us. You know, that we sit and we watch all these, all this History Channel stuff and say, bad Hitler, bad Stalin, bad this one, bad this one. And don't look at what our country did. Don't look at the fact that our people, we don't want all these damn Jews come up in here. What the hell? And uh, your great grandparents, probably your great grandparents, my grandparents, uh, and, and my parents were sitting back looking and like, well, you know, if they all flood into here, they'll do to us what they did to these poor Germans. And you won't hear that on TV. You're not going to see it in a documentary. It's a truth nobody wants to say, but it's the truth. It's the truth. So all these ships got sent back. He couldn't, he couldn't give them away. He couldn't pay a country to take them. But then he started to. He started sending, uh, and they worked deals out. Not quite like what you see on the History Channel. Germany put forth, a, I don't know in Reichsmarks what they were, but uh, many, many marks of their currency. Uh, and <clears throat> they started Israel. And started at full force in 1947, right after the war. Now look at what that's got us. Uh, before then, you didn't hear no uh, 
England, the U.S., Canada, Germany, France, being bombed, all this uh, 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 craziness where you see your people be beat down. And, and every time you see your people be beat down, it goes back to which shouldn't be this generation of North American black people. It shouldn't be this generation, but the generation before it and the generation before it, yes. But uh, the black people living today, they got, uh, uh, they are acting like they've been harmed, like the harm that's been cast out in reality. I'm talking this generation. Blacks before them were hurt, uh, and and some got very militant. And uh, but if you were born in the sixties, uh, mid to late sixties, seventies, you haven't seen anything as a black person that should have you full fledged militant over here to blowing people up or shooting people or uh, things like that. Uh, however, with what was going on in Palestine and the newly formed Israel, uh, there's a lot of pushing the people off their land. Uh, well, you know what's happened. You watch the news today. It's nothing good from it. And it has created since the U.S. and England and Germany and France has backed the modern day Israel. Uh, all this hate for all of us, and and newsflash, uh, if if you're you live in France, Germany, England, anywhere in the UK or the US or Canada, those people don't care what color your skin is. They don't. They hate you, and uh, they want you dead. And uh, so we're just going in a revolving thing here just a revolving thing and it's a lot of idiocy idiocy going on and nobody's really looking at true fact uh true documents did this really happen uh and things of that sort uh you can look at uh, well i guess i had talked about the policing you got the I talk about the policing all the time. You got the thin blue line. You got the people over here on one side that just want to defund them and basically not have law and order. Uh, they're the sick people. Uh, they're the mentally ill people. And then you got the very highly ignorant people over here on this side that want to just fund them to kingdom come and lay out everybody's rights down on the table. An officer comes and tells you, get the hell out of your house. Uh, you're supposed to get out. And these people at least have an excuse. The defund people. Uh, they're not right upstairs. The people that lean towards the right, that are that thin blue line thing, uh, they, they don't really have an excuse. They're very selfish people that claim aside through their ignorance. But as soon as something happens to them, uh, their whole world shattered. Well, I didn't know that you can't come in here. Well, and you guess what? You said they couldn't go in uh, the black family's inner city Detroit uh, house wherever in the bad area you sat and watched cops and you was completely okay with cops going in there in full blast and now you got a problem with them coming in your house see law and order needs to be applied equally uh, to the criminal and to the non-criminal uh, to the black and to the white uh, to the Latino and to the uh, Asian. Uh, it, it has to be blindfolded. You know, Lady Justice up there holding that weight scales 
on that set of scales and got those blindfolds on. She ain't got the blindfold on no more. She ain't even holding the weight scale no more. She's just us, which is the police and the court system, and all of you, and we're going to get you. And you need to get on YouTube and just look. And there's no good officers no more. I'm sure there are some. Don't go there with me. But the, uh, very few. Because you can have uh, a cop do something very, very bad in front of 25 other cops. And the 25 other will sit there and, yeah, and won't do nothing. Which makes the other 25 bad. So every time you got a a situation where a uh, I seen one instance that big brute bald headed sergeant went over there and was hitting on uh, a black guy that they had in the back of a cruiser, and one of the smaller uh, women officers went over and tried to pull him back by the belt, and you know what she got for it? Uh, he went for her throat. Uh, vicious these cops, vicious. But it took a, a small woman to stand up to that big bully. See? And we just don't come from the same cut of cloth that most of you come from. If I'd seen something out like that, uh, you just, just old school, you wait around, you, you, you catch him at the supermarket, and you handle him. You know, you catch him down at the shopping mall, and you handle him. And it's an attitude adjustment that the, the, the bad person will carry with them all through their life. Court system can't correct the attitude. And that's another thing. Uh, you've got hundreds of thousands of people in prison in the U.S., in North America, for crimes that have no victim. You know, all of you, and especially Trump supporters, of, I'm a Trump supporter, by the way, but I see a lot of you, it's a victimless crime. Oh, my God, it's a victimless crime on that fraud thing. Are you aware that probably six to seven out of ten people laid up in prison are in prison or, or the, or the, or, and or jails? And there's no victim to misdemeanor crimes. To misdemeanor crimes. Yet, you got people out here, they uh, rip apart. Uh, you know, you're forced to give your money into some type of retirement. Uh, and, you know, you give your money to the government, they take and spend it on military or handouts to people that wouldn't work in a pie factory as a pie taster or to hand it to the military to go kill people that you got no problem with that nobody in the u.s has a problem with and to spy and terrorize and all that or to give to other country citizens then you got your private retirement funds and they sat there and put them in into companies and these people are doing ponzi schemes and all sorts of stuff and still in your private retirement yeah, I mean, it's going on constantly. Uh, Bernie Madoff got put in jail. He was the poster boy for it some years ago. Uh, but there's countless other people still walking around. They're not in prison. Uh, a lot of retirement, folks' retirement money uh, went into that weirdo uh, Jewish boy with the frizzled hair. Uh, I, I hadn't heard of him. He ain't been in prison. And he's just spending the money on himself. You go down there and you grab a candy bar off the shelf and walk outside with it because you're starving. And your ass will get three hots and a cot for 30, 40, 60, 90 days before your trial even comes up. You know, they'll let you sit and rot in a jail. A uh, guy just got six months, Chile DeCastro, an activist, six months 
in the county jail in Las Vegas, whatever that county is to Las Vegas, uh, for not getting far enough away from an officer who was making a traffic stop. He was 20, 25 foot away from the car and just filming with his camera and listening just to protect the ladies' rights. And uh, that cop wasn't having it. He didn't want nobody around knowing what he was doing to out here uh, as a, acting as a road pirate. Six months in jail. The guy told him, the cop told him back up. He backed up two or three steps. Wasn't far enough for the cop. The cop goes and arrests him. Judge puts him in jail. You can sit and think about this for six months because they don't want you knowing what they're up to. They're secretive. All this shit. The way to get away with not being, uh, accounting for anything that they're doing is we've got an ongoing investigation. You can't, we can't comment. You know, I I could clean Washington up in 24 hours. Chris Ray come in there and hand some bullshit like that. He gets tarred and feathered. We'll say, we'll see you next time. Finish that investigation and get all that information up in here. And you best not have disappeared the information. But you don't tell us next time. Good old tar and feather. And they used to do it in Washington all the time. But you don't hear about it. Uh, had a jewel. And I guess it was. Uh, uh, I can't remember which one it was. But it was Alexander Hamilton. Or Richard Burr. Or uh, Aaron Burr. Uh, I think it was Aaron Burr got killed. And they were having a. Uh, uh, knock down, drag out over whether to have a central bank or not. And they just went out front and had a duel. And one of them died. They accepted the duel and one of them died. Do you realize how much more justice there'd be in this world if they brought back dueling? Who, who would have a congressman or a senator sitting in office uh, that wouldn't do and was a coward. Nobody would have, want that. I'm not saying that dueling is a necessity to come back. I think tarn and feather would be a good, is necessary. Uh, but a duel here or there, but see, you can't do nothing no more. You can't correct anything bad no more. Because you've got a justice system sitting over here going after somebody that's been pulled because they got two or three drinks in them, get their life's life wrecked, and get sent off to jail, right? Sent off to prison, family wrecked, no money for food for the kids because the man can't work or whatever. I've seen this happen to plenty of guys. I had a... a, a a business for years and had guys working for me and they had go through that. And uh, my instinct was always to go down there to the court with them, tell the judge they got a job, I need them. Uh, just put them on probation or something. Please don't. You're going to wreck the children's lives, the wife's lives. And, uh, yeah, and it could be a mother, too. Just yank mommy out of the house. Now, they ain't had a wreck. They haven't hurt anybody. There's no victim, yet they go off to prison. They lose their jobs. And uh, sorry, that's just not constitutionally uh, correct. Just not. It's just not. So there's a whole host of things that's going on uh with the justice system, right? We've just had an election. Uh, that election was not was uh, not won uh, by the guy that's sitting up there in that big house. Uh, it was won by the other guy. It had already been decided at 9.30, 10 o'clock Eastern time. 
there was no way those votes could have pulled up. But they did because uh, of a fake phony flu that was going around that the hospital was killing people uh, with, actually. And the thing about it is I had people uh, that were in the Republican Party that were dear friends of mine. Oh, my dad's got this. I just can't go out. I'm like, don't put him in the hospital. You get to a doctor that'll give him the three medicines that, that, that were mentioned, and you keep him at home. They go right down, run him up, put him in the hospital, and the bitch comes out crying two days later. Well, they induced a coma and put him on the machine, and he didn't come out. And that's, that's, all these ventilators were, isn't that amazing? Never had nothing respiratory go around like that, where they just have to have ventilators instead of trying to treat in other instances. They weren't even putting the tubes in. You know, they were like, don't do that. Put them on a ventilator and do some coma and have the all the virus air and bacteria air running out of them and right back into them. And, of course, they died. They got worse and they died. It, all the protocol was wrong to do. And then they steal an election. Because the God knows you can't go in person to vote. You have to do it by mail. And everyone knows that as soon as you get off center and you start moving to the left, you're just dealing with corrupt, crony, communist crooks. They have no morals or ethics about that. And the election was given to the wrong person. Well, it was stolen and handed to the wrong person. Yeah, I said it. I've looked at enough proof. I'm not sitting here letting the evening news tell me or John down the street tell me what the deal is. I looked. Uh, hundreds of cases that have went forward. Penalties ledged, but they didn't overturn the election. Hundreds of penalties given out. Uh, Hundreds of, you're guilty of voter fraud. Uh, different cases with hundreds of thousands of votes in many, many states. So, yeah, the Democrats will get up and go, yeah, it's been proven. Everything that's went to court, uh, we won. Who's we? You know, who is we? That's the first portion of the lie. The second portion of it is the one part. They didn't. They, they've lost many, many court cases. Almost all of them, actually. But but the election wasn't overturned. We don't have nothing in place to overturn an election. You know, the truthfulness of the vote was counted on in the Constitution by the framers, and there's no getting America back. There's no way to come back from from that. Uh, you you can't have a free constitutional republic uh, without the sacred ability to be able to go in, cast a vote, and it not be messed with. No adding, no subtracting to it. Then it went on. We got a uh, thing. And uh, I, our, our family didn't get it. I instructed everybody day one. I said, Do, you ain't nobody going down there and getting that shit. You go down there and get that shit, uh, don't come to me for help. You won't get it. You won't get it. Uh, and so we didn't, uh, none of us got it. And I am so glad now. Why are you glad now? Well, if you'd open your eyes and you'd look around, you'd see a lot of people in their 20s and 30s are dropping dead of massive heart attacks that were not prior to the thing. If you'd bother to go look at the documentation that people have put up, see, one thing that's documented that's open is life insurance. 
So they go look at the people, the, the life insurance records, and they're seeing all these payouts, and they're seeing all these massive heart attacks and just heart stoppages, just stops, and they can't figure out why. But through the Life Insurance Institute that keeps all these records, they're able to go look and see. You can't go look and see through medical stuff. Uh, that's another thing. Seal it up and then do what you want. They tell you they're protecting your privacy, but what they're doing is is, is keeping from the public the mess they're doing. It's never been about your privacy. You hear somebody say, well, we don't do that because of your privacy. Ain't nobody ever attempted to stand up in government and protect your privacy. Never. And as a matter of fact, they'll lock you up for throwing a piece of paper down on the ground and you'll be in the news headline. They'll give your names out to your local newspaper. So you see, what it held somebody about your damn privacy? Grow up. So I've just talked about a bunch of stuff here. Uh, uh, but any of this in insanity, if you've went through, we're at 41 minutes now, and I'm going to take it a little longer. If you're in boxing right now and I tell you something, I've got reasons why to tell you. Uh, if we're doing something and you don't understand it, sit back and watch. Uh, you know, I give my uh, our number out, I give it out privately to specific individuals. Uh, that if they need some advice or want to know something for us, we're open. I'll call and do WhatsApp video or whatever with you. Uh, but be careful coming up in here when you don't know what the fuck you're doing yourself. Uh, just be careful. You, you know, you may say something. You, know, you have no idea why I'm doing what I'm doing, right? You're not qualified to because you, you ain't never looked around in your life. You've looked at that guy, that guy, that guy, and that guy. And that's been all the learning you've got. And you're unable to look at the plethora of things that's going on out there. You don't know the history of the sport. Uh, you have no idea. A guy gets up in a boxing stance, and if it's not just like you've been taught, oh, you're doing something terribly wrong there. You have no idea that uh, that there are different styles, and if you if you if you do know other styles, uh, I'll say like uh, the Tyson, uh, the Peekaboo, the uh, uh, Joe Frazier type of style, Kenny Norton type of style. Uh, uh, there's many different types of style. Uh, Joe, uh, Joe Lewis type of style, Rocky Marciano type of style. Now you just know what you've seen on TV the past 15 years, maybe 20. You're not qualified, you know. So if you, I ain't saying if you see me, but if you see an old guy coming in, is going bald, turned gray, wrinkled and scarred up face shut your mouth and sit back and look and listen that's the problem with a lot of gyms today you need to look around locally call some old timers they'll come down to your gym they'd be happy to and they'll come in there and they'll say well look, you know 50 years ago we used to do this and we had one of these things up on the wall over there. I don't know. Y'all do things different today, but uh, and just learn some stuff. Boxing sucks today. It uh, sucks. Everybody's doing the same thing. Uh, nobody's uh, you, you got uh, out of 100 boxers, you got everybody and a uh, upward George Foreman type of stance style uh, out of 100 you got 90 or, or you got 70 80 doing that then you got 10 trying to do a peekaboo style and can't get their body well enough to do it because it's a very hard you have got to 
muscle bound your body and calisthenic yourself half to death to be able to handle that style and keep going. So therefore you don't do that. You know, it'd be too hard. And the rest, uh, and then the, the other ones, uh, well, at least you're trying. That's all I got to say. At least you're trying. At least most people are trying. But I look around. I see all these camps. Uh, you know, what little they show you. I look over here. I see Ryan Garcia. I look over here. I see Devin Haney. I look over there. I see Tank Davis. Uh, and in defense of Tank Davis, a lot of the things he's put out, I've liked. I've said, yeah. These boys over here know what the fuck they're... Shh. These boys over here know what the heck they're doing. Ain't no finesse going on over there with them boys. They're working. And I like it. Uh, so, but most of these camps and stuff, it just... Uh, I don't know. I look. I'm not impressed with anything I see. But, of course, you all, you're like, oh, you know. Get around somebody, spend time with somebody, uh, spend a lot of time around, well, you can't now because he's dead, Ernie Shavers. Spend some time around Big John Tate. Uh, uh, spend some time around Bone Crusher Smith. Uh, it would be life-changing for you. you. You see different things in different decades, in different moments, in different eras. Your era is weak. It is not strong. Your era is slow. It is not fast. Your era is too defensive. And not offensive. And I will take any kid up. Match him up against a kid in your gym. Give me three weeks with a boy. Uh, reasonable experience. And I'll have my kid come in there. And beat the crap out of your kid. Every single time. Not the best two out of three. Not nine out of ten. Every single time. Every time. And uh, to those of you, you, you know who you are. And those of you, you know who you ain't. You know. Uh, you know I'm not going to go down to elite fitness and boxing and make a claim like that. That guy down there is excellent uh, I'm not going to go up here to Kepner Boxing and uh, go in there and uh, start boasting a game on him I do know he, that guy is great uh, but I'm talking about those of you who you got the local gym down there you got the one style it was a style you was taught and you can't deviate, you can't learn nothing else, you can't see nothing else. Because as people can't see history, as they can't see what's going on across the street from them, as they can't see their justice system, how the legal system is messed up, how this is messed up, how that's messed up, until it happens specifically to them, you can't see until one of these guys I mentioned or myself brings a kid in and beats the ever-loving crap out of your kid every single time. Until it hits you, you can't see. And what I try to do is just get the eyes open beforehand. I'd like to see some good boxing before I die. So you trainers wake up and get to work here. Uh, much love to everybody. God bless my Christian brothers and sisters. 
and we will see you soon.